Hey guys, Bishmi back with another video, and today we got our SRO week cap for week seven. So, um, you eight. know, oh, eight? Oh my god, why did I name this week seven? <laughs> That's what I'm looking at. But, you know, I am joined here by, you know, one of the content creators from Creator Haven, if you guys didn't already know, Shiny Shuriken. Hey, what's up, guys? So, yeah, you know, let's get into the power rankings of the SRL. So, after week seven, you know, I did pick up a loss. So, we see me fall four spots from being in that fifth spot when I was right next to Shiny Shark. And, you know, we were right next to each other. They had to break us up because, you know, as you guys have seen, um, if you've been following, you know, either he wins and I lose or I win and he loses. So in this case, I dropped four spots after my loss against the Ice Cube. You know, that thing reverse swept, which was definitely <laughs> my fault. <laughs> but, you know, you got to you got to know how abilities work. Um, so uh, any comment on, you know, my drop? It's a lot. <laughs> um, it's a lot. It's it's literally four slots for one mistake. Yeah. Because you didn't play bad. You just, one single misplay costs you the whole match. Yeah. And sometimes it can be like that. Like, you can get away with several misplays and, and still kind of turn around. This was one misplay that equals four drops. It's a lot. Yeah. And, uh, like, um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty, it's a pretty steep drop, you know, um, like, um, Shiny is saying, but, like he said, you know, it was just one misplay, and I'm fine, you know, like, I'm just ready to bounce back this week, um, you know, to talk about your matchup, Shiny, you know, in week seven, you ranked up against the Cerulean Mewtwo's, as we can see, is in the top one spot, and you were the first one to defeat the undefeated team, so, you know, congratulations to you, you know, you were able <laughs> to go up from four to second, so, you know, that's a pretty good jump, you know, um, you know, I definitely yeah. agree, if not... If not going to second, I would have agreed with going to third. You know, um, any comments on that? No, I think it was, um, I think it was the exact right movement. Um, they left the Cerulean City Mewtwo's at number one, uh, which the Cerulean City Mewtwo's spent six weeks either in the number one or number two spot. Mm -hmm. So to not drop them or to not swap us, I completely agree with that move. But I think the only movement is actually to move me up. Because the Dendamil Dragonites did take a loss in that week, so yeah. that's the that's really the only movement that could be made. Um, and it was a commanding win too. It was a four zero. Um, really was in control the whole time. Mimic you actually only went down to life orb damage. So, um, or no, it it was in Trick Room, but it it took out a bunch of Pokemon. I mean, it was in there just doing things and. So I, I get it. I get my my movement. Um, one last comment on your your four drop though, is I always look at power rankings a little differently, and I think we get away from looking at the overall team composition and the performance. Like your performance was good, aside from one single move. Uh, I don't know if that equates to four in a power ranking spot. I think I look at your overall power ranking of your team, and I would probably put you a couple of spots higher. I think two spots down would've would have made fun. sense yeah. but four spots seems to be a lot right and i think aside from uh you know me losing the match and like i totally agree with you i, I think it has to do with what was brought and how you played it you know um like we kind of agreed you know i was in control for most of the match until the one misplay and you know um that is pretty much what equated to my four drop but i want to say other than that like i think they had to look at the other teams you know the lisbon arcanines no um the galar greninjas took out the dendamil dragonites um you know and i felt like i think it was more of having to move all of the other people in conjunction with me so i'm looking forward to like um you know if my performance in this week um would change my ranking enough to like at least put me back at fifth or even higher you know yeah <clears throat> so you know that's yeah. enough about the power rankings let's get into <laughs> shiny shuriken's match see you guys over uh, there. where'd you have it at so let's hop into your match in three two one so the first thing to call out you guys is that 
I was toying around with my new layout and my new sprites, <laughs> not paying attention, and uh, it cost me my lead off. I didn't realize I hadn't clicked done. <laughs> and you can see the visible confusion on my face. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to figure out why Galvantula is not out on the field, which Rotom Heat was the worst lead off for me on, it, on that one. I get my stupid sprites fixed. <laughs> um, and honestly, I'm behind start on turn one. I have to make an adjustment. I have to move. I have to take damage on something else, which just overall kind of stinks because Cloyster would absolutely go down to a bolt switch. Yeah. And, like, <clears throat> um, you know, if you had Galvantula, it would have been a different scenario. You know, obviously, um, it would have kind of forced your opponent to either volt switch or go into um, a overheat which would have put him at a disadvantage, you know, minus two special attack, I believe. And, yep. Um, you know, your Grimmsnarl was able to take that, um, whichever one he went for. Uh, he went Volt Switch, and, and it did actually it did actually do a lot of damage, but uh, we had stayed in with Galvantula and maybe taken an overheat. You can only imagine that Grimmsnarl would have came in and ate that up. Right. Um, and, you know, I didn't have <clears throat> any prep into this week so none of these sets are edited from my prior week you know so this grim snarl's not built for this team um you know him on chan and the pokemon that i usually tend to make the most edits to aren't adjusted and so we're we're working with a move set from the prior week and it's like i don't have the brick break that i really wanted to bring so it's like well let's just go ahead and get the light screen up to minimize as much damage and start burning turns um, we ended up finding out that the Lapras was holding Light Clay because the Aurora Veil did go eight turns. So Right. So it was kind of like, um, you know, even though you didn't have the um, the right set to deal with his Lapras, you know, if, definitely if you had the Brick Break Grimmsnarl, your Light Screen would have lasted more than his Aurora Veil, you know, which kind of sucks. But, I mean, in this case, you know, both teams having that defensive, um, you know, anchor, was pretty good. Well, I least. think the way that I would have played it was I probably would have light screened. Um, I still would have light screened here, but the thing is, is that I, I might not have that volt switch damage on. Yeah. You know, I would rather have been a full health Grim Snarl here, which obviously made a big play. I had to take that damage to start getting my plays going. So I want to Dynamax here and go max guard, and then I mess up. I go for damage when I wanted to max guard. I literally even saying it on screen and I, <laughs> uh, yeah, just misplays and miss prep and, um, not paying close enough attention. I just, uh, could have done a lot better. So what I probably would have done had I had brick break, I probably would have set the light screen. I probably would have gigantamaxed max guarded gone for the max knuckle, uh, probably max guarded, uh, or no, I probably would have uh, max knuckled again with him out. I probably would have then came out of Dynamax, brick bricked. I mean, nothing was really touching me. He brought an extremely specially offensive team. Um, I could have prepped for that. I could have thunder put Thunder Wave over Reflect. So yeah. Do you want to talk about Grimmsnarl outspeeding Lapras on that first turn? <laughs> yeah. So on the first turn against Lapras, um, I get to G-Max Snooze. And that was the oh, one and only time I ever win the speed tie. <laughs> and Grim's, or Lapras wins every speed tie after that. I just thought, for some reason, I was like, oh, he's Swift Swim. That's not even an ability of Lapras. <laughs> so, in typical shiny luck, I uh, <laughs> don't have any. <laughs> and like like you said, um, you know, if you you would have gone for the max guard you know you kind of kind of misplayed a bit you know even telling yourself you know i should go for the, the max guard here and then you wind up going for damage you know like you said uh, you know i don't know if you want to talk about your mindset going in, into this match like what you you had just done <laughs> <laughs> uh we were coming off the 100 hour marathon um i had got off the marathon i took a road trip for an hour um spent the night trying to hang out with family and trying to get some time to myself and got very little sleep that night still came out the next morning got very little sleep and uh this was a little after midnight so i'm telling you i was exhausted my mindset was not in battling um i was really ready for bed <laughs> <laughs> you you were ready to get hit by a g max news huh 
Yes, <laughs> I was. I don't know. I just I didn't have much to do. I couldn't think of plays. Uh, I didn't have sets for this for this team. I, I set up a reflect here because I was like, I have nothing else to do here. I know that they're, he's not a very physical team, but I'm going to get out sped oh, yeah, because he was quote-unquote Swiss swim. <laughs> he was Swiss swim, so... <laughs> Could have rolled the dice. And even here on this next play, um, I ended up going Hitmonchan, which all I did with Hitmonchan was swap Bright Powder for Choice Ban because mm-hmm. I couldn't think of anything creative really fast. <laughs> Well, what do you think um, Hitmonchan would have had? If uh, well, Hitmonchan has a really great special defense space. I think right. it's like one ten. And looking oh, at his wow. team, I would have one hundred percent taken every speed investment out of Hitmonchan and ran it into special defense and attack. Do you think he would have been assault vested? No, I don't know. Maybe I I might have been assault vested, but here's like here's a great point here. Um, you get to see what uh thunder punch does big damage yeah. with the choice ban but look at this psychic through light screen without any special defense investment that did nothing and that was super effective As opposed and to like the thunder punch I, you know which was also super effective and he had a aurora veil up yeah and he did yeah exactly and i sh- i misplayed here like i was like i am not even like trying to think of like the next play I should. I could have easily predicted a switch to Mudsdale here, and I say it in the video. It's like that was really just me not paying attention. Mm-hmm. So, really bad, really bad plays, um, bad mindset. Just you know, and that this is what it gets you is uh, a really, really rough game that you probably have a very strong chance of winning. Mm-hmm. And I went Cloister here, thinking that hey, I can set up on this Mudsdale, but then immediately remembering it's like wait, I'm faster. I can't. I'm faster. I I think here I could have tried my luck because I think it's due with the flinch. Um, I could have tried the ice kill spear, but then this guy's plus six in defense. You know what? And like, although you might call it a misplay, I definitely like like the double out because we don't see a lot of people doing it. You know, like bringing in a Pokemon to then switch out. You know, it forced him to go for the body press instead of the earthquake, which we see he has, you know, later in the battle. And, you know, body press not doing anything to Salazzo. And, you know, you had the the red card on it just to get it out the way. You know, he would have been at, he was already at plus two defense. So, like, I, I like the play, you know. Yeah. I saw a lot of setup mons when I looked at his team. And I thought red card would be really fun. I was trying to pick an item for Salazzo because... Can't run multiple items, can't run two sashes. So, like, oh, you know, red card could be really interesting. And, you know, if he's got a Blastoise that's going, getting loose on me, and I guess Mudsdale as well. And I was also thinking about um, if Drample was going to set up or anything like that, or nasty plotting Rotoms. You know, it was a nice, fun way to kind of stop that in his tracks. Wow. You know, I might have to steal that. <laughs> I, could, I could definitely see why it's, why it's used, you know. I didn't think of yeah. using red card in that fashion until watching your battle. Yeah. I've been waiting to get red card used, um, but I guess I really haven't thought about it with such a frail mon like Salazzle. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, he kind of lets me get the dust clops gone. Um, I'm still looking for ways to try and come back here. I mean, I'm still trying. I'm still trying to put an effort out. Like, I'm like... Maybe I save Salazzle to come back in after Trick Room because it could still technically do some damage. If I could get a Toxic off on Mudsdale, um, if I can Flamethrower the Lapras maybe for some neutral damage or or whatever, um, I still felt like Salazzle could some have some viability, but then it's like it's always comes down to the same thing. It's like, what do I want to take that Nightshade damage? Yeah, you know, it's... What, what do you switch in after Grimmsnarl being down? You know, Grimmsnarl would have eating that nightshade, nightshade up i'm pretty sure yeah so it's just like what do you switch into yeah so i don't know it was just really tough uh really tough match where I, I know i took a lot of time on my decisions but it was just trying to find the best play in a in a game that i had not put together any prior like pre-match plays right and uh, i i want to say that's definitely something like kind of tough to go into you know um 
trying to, you know, trying to maybe force something to work when you're not sure how it works yourself versus, you know, a team like yeah. that. Yeah, the, um, you know, the team's a great team, and this is 100% on me for just not prepping. Um, it's got a lot of potential, which honestly kept me in this game and probably made it more competitive for Dark Spark than it probably should have been with going up against a team with no prep. Mm -hmm. But, you know, like like you said, you know, that was also kind, kind of on you. You know, he played this definitely to the best of his ability, you know, after seeing what your team was looking like. You know, how could he, he was probably thinking of how he plays around it, you know, after setting up the trick room for his Drampa here to maybe, you know, put in some work. He also had a slow team looking at it with Drampa, Mudsdale, um, Dust Globs. Oh my God. <laughs> <In lab -based. laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I think, I don't know if that was like a sack or something, or maybe he didn't know that Mimikyu would just Oko uh, Drampa, but... Yeah, uh, ended up just taking that thing out. Yeah, that that drampa that drampa got out of there like it was had no business being there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, you know, obviously I I wanted to try and keep Mimikyu healthy and Trick Room still. So here with the Mudsdale, there's still two turns of Trick Room left, and. Uh, it's not looking great for my physical attack in Mimikyu because I don't want to help him set up. So I just, I, I have nothing else to do but to let it go down. I don't have good switches. Um, everything else is going to take bad damage. And so I just go for the wood hammer, but it does actually prove to be a little bit advantageous to me because I get it. I get to pop his berry, mm -hmm. which lets me basically think Galvantula can try to win me this match. Right. All I have to do is get rid of Rotom. Yeah, because, you know, with, um, you know, Galvantula having Energy Ball and then Thundering, the Blastoise, and Lapras, you know, with Rotom out the way, Galvantula looks very good. It does. Um, and so this play here, I'll be honest, this play here is just me trying to make him think I don't have Energy Ball on Galvantula. I did decide to sit on the clock. I did get I did get out of hand. I forgot what I was doing. I was like looking at other stuff and um, talking to myself, you know, talking through my play style and my thought process. So I forgot about what I was doing. I could have done it a little quicker, but I wanted him to not, you know, if I go hard into Galvantula, he might think, all right, he has an answer in Galvantula. He's got energy ball. But if I take this long, he might think that I'm just bringing it in as a last resort to get webs up and it's sashed. So I took the risk, and it, it was it did pay off. Um, I get Galvantula in, and uh, I get to go click Energy Ball, and he stays in, and I get huge damage off. Yeah, you know, although you know, might a lot of people might say you're timer stalling. That right there is actually a, a really good way to play it, you know, because you're probably he probably thinks you're looking at your Pokemon like, uh, you know, who do you have left? So you probably send out Galvantula as a sacrifice, but you know in your case you know it, it worked out great you know you got all yeah. that that big energy ball damage and here i really wanted to make a prediction but i just i didn't feel like i was in the prediction game i wanted to go thunder um and i wanted to honestly kind of think about putting up webs but i was like no he still has rotom so he can still defog so i thought i would just go ahead and stick with uh going with energy ball and obviously i don't get a lot of damage thunder would have been the play um, I do find out that Rotom is scarfed later on in the match, like towards the end, even though the three minute timer came up, it's not over yet. Um, he got a little lucky there with the crit. I don't know if it would have mattered. Um, you know, special defense, Hitmonchan probably would have lived that and done well. Yeah. So again, just a lack of prep against me and a little bit of RNG, just tough. It's tough. Yeah, because let's say you were, you know, um, especially defensive you know you would have lived the lapper's hit more uh, better and then you would have had more hp to take the the volt switch you know i'm not sure if the crit would have um killed you there but if not he was forced to bring in as you see blastoise or lapper's or mudsdale which you outspeed you know i'm pretty sure so yep. you know you've gotten a big hit off you know maybe a drain punch you know there's no telling yeah and i i want to make the prediction that he goes rotom and uh, I do get it right, and I go Thunder here. 
Um, so I get the good damage off, which you can see it does about 15 to 20%. So had I have gotten uh, another Thunder off when I when I wanted to predict it, that thing probably would have been below half. half. Um, it would have been a lot more manageable, but honestly, I just too many misplays leave me behind here. Right. And then here, you know, I'm pretty sure this is when you realize that he's scarfed because yep. he loses beat tie. So yeah, had yep. you have led Galvantula at the start, you would have realized that, you know, you, you were outsped at the very start of the battle instead of finding out <laughs> at the end. So yeah, you know, yeah. that little tidbit of information is definitely um, key. Knowing it's Scarfed Rotom at the start versus the end is a big difference. And um, yeah, just unfortunate. Galvantula goes down and I'm left with Koyster here. And I did. I sat on the 20 seconds here to preserve some differential. Um, I didn't, you know, I could have let him try to attack. He maybe had Focus Blast. It maybe KOs. I It maybe hits. But, uh, you know, wasting the 20 seconds was just honestly the best play for me from a differential standpoint heading into playoffs. Right. And then I know we talked about this a little bit, but I'm not sure if a Focus Blast would have either hit or KO'd from full. You know, if he had Aura Sphere for a little bit more accuracy, I don't think that would have KO'd, but I don't I don't think he had a means of killing you there, but, you know, either way, you know, preserving differential is definitely better, especially when you're already faced with a loss. You know, it would have been a difference if you were sitting on the timer the whole battle, you know, I would call that timer stalling, but for the very last turn, I don't really see it as, um, you know, that much of a difference. Um, I, I don't know if he was carrying Aura Sphere. I don't know if he was carrying Focus Blast. Um, there's also the potential that he could have gone Shell Smash in anticipation of myself. I mean, if the if the clock continues, right? If you had more time on the clock, you know, shout out. Can we get ten more minutes? You know, <laughs> you know my opponent. End. My opponent did message me and say that he was sashed, which is interesting because if he happened to go shell smash predicting my shell smash um what i would have actually done there just because i was kind of out of out of pokemon and kind of out of luck i probably would have ended up going um icicle spear mm -hmm. and i probably would have picked up another ko at least on blastoise because he would have shell smashed and he wouldn't have got the white herb back and icicle spear probably would have ko'd after five right um if not be within range of ice shard and, um, you know, at that point, he probably goes Rotom and he can KO with that. With that. But uh, there's just, there was so many misplays and there, my opponent played well. He didn't misplay at all. Um, right. Maybe he misplayed on Drampa, leaving Drampa in on Mimikyu, but that might have also been just a kind of observed sack to get the disguise broken. Um, might have misplayed on Dustclops, letting Dustclops go down. But otherwise, you know, my opponent just, he just played normal, like he played well, played as you're expected to play in a, in a league like this. And I just came in with hot garbage. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. you know, on that note, let's uh, hop right into my match. Yep. So we'll get into my match in three, two, one. So... My idea for this match, you know, going up against um, Squid, was to have Weezing with Zap Cannon. Zap Cannon is a 50% accurate move, and it's kind of like Inferno, where if it hits, it'll paralyze. But if it misses, I had um, Blunder Policy. But because he had Paleo Swine, you know, obviously that wouldn't work because it's a ground type. I lead off with Como O, which has Stealth Rocks, and um, I'm pretty sure four Mons on his team didn't like coming in on Stealth Rocks. So, um, I figured he lead it also to set up his own. So now I figure that I could start Dragon Dancing up because I was max HP, max special defense. I mean, max defense. So I'm not sure if Pilo Swine ever runs a physical set, but I was pretty sure I could live a couple ice shards and then in turn drain punch all my health back. Um, what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think Como O is a great lead. Let's just call out that it's not wheezing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> For the first time. Um, 
seven weeks in a row of wheezing leads uh, culminating in a Como O, which I think is a great, great lead off looking at the team. Um, and I think you predicted out perfectly on the lead off. So props to you. Just allowed you to get set up. Yeah. And um, here I start to run a calculation because I'm running Dream Punch and Earthquake. Now he did get off the Intimidate, which puts me back down to neutral. So I figure that um, I can't, I do about 50 with an earthquake, but I wanted to get like a lot of damage off. So I start getting greedy. And so I go for another dragon dance, you know, <laughs> that'll put me at plus two, plus, um, plus two attack, plus three speed. And he goes for the pain split, you know, expecting me to maybe go for the earthquake. I heal that right back with my leftovers. And like now I'm in a very good position, you know, being at plus two. Um, I want to say I go for another dragon dance because at this point, I don't think he has anything to hit me. You know, he go, he went for the, um, what was it? Pain split. Yeah. <laughs> so here I am at, what am I? Plus two attack, plus three speed. He goes for the toxic, yeah. you know, great play because you know, you want to, you want to put me on a timer. Now you see, I'm starting to set up and I might have the opportunity to sweep your team. You know, this is kind of what you were leading back to with Como. Oh, you know, that thing could come in and just sweep, you know, if you get it set up. Yeah, that's a, <laughs> a great play from Squid to stop that in his tracks a little bit. Um, I'm surprised he withdrew uh, to let something else come in and take this hit. Maybe saw some viability in Quillfish later on, but uh, yeah, I mean, you're, you're plus two, plus three. That's uh, <laughs> definitely something you got to be afraid of right away. Yeah, and I want to say his pile of swine like, kind of ate the attack. I think his him switching out was to try to um you know nerf my como because every time quillfish switches back in he gets the attack drop so i'm at what plus two plus three here this brings me to plus three plus four and you know when i was looking at it <laughs> <laughs> i was like well i definitely need to be at plus two to two hit ko the quillfish and so um i wanted to get that up because i figured if he brought it back in i would just go right back down um i go for the drain punch here just to collect some health back you know that ice shard is starting to do a little bit too much damage so um i heal all the way back up um let's just keep a counter right now i'm at plus three plus four i believe yeah <laughs> so i'm definitely expecting him to bring in quillfish because like i said quillfish can live it, it's a two hit ko at plus two so that's that's why i said um you know, I went for the extra dragon dance. Yep, I think so. Yeah, it's exactly what he does. Yeah. Great, know. great predictions and great movement. You're doing really well so far. <laughs> yeah, um, you know, with with out even needing to make a switch, you know, Como is, is doing a lot. And so he switches out again, you know, I'm pretty sure, just to get Quillfish in to really nerf my um, attack because I don't know if you saw the match between me and um, Art, but his cloister was able to get off a shell smash and i also had to intimidate quillfish in which um to nerf his attack and to put me back in the game i kind of had to bring in quillfish take it out and bring it back in so that i could yep. like get off the intimidate so what do you think about that switch it's an interesting switch to just sack arcanine there yeah um i mean i think he was kind of just like back against the wall looked at what he didn't need in his case and so um, he brought in Arcanine to sack it. But I want to say, if I had went for the Drain Punch, I would have been at a way better position because I would have sapped all the HP back. And, um, you know, the Toxic wouldn't have done that much. I'm pretty sure he brought in Aegislash here to go for a King Shield because looking at the Toxic damage, if I was in for one more turn, it would have KO'd. But to my surprise, yep. he was banded and he went for the Shadow Sneak. You know, I definitely did not expect that. And look at that damage on Sendiscorch, man. <laughs> Interesting. That did 99. And so <laughs> I'm like, bro, are you kidding me? Like, I, I, I brought in Sendiscorch expecting a King Shield. And, you know, I want to say um, that was a little misplay on my part because if, um, as we all know, Weezing neutralizes abilities. And Aegislash's ability is stance change. So if I brought in Weezing there, 
he would have been he would have stayed in his shield form instead of switching into blade form and um you know his attack in shield form is like what i think 40 140 or... no in when it's in shield form yeah what oh in oh yeah it's 40 yeah it so... swaps 140 to 40 i think so he would have had like a choice banded 40 you know because it, it wouldn't have changed 50. okay so so 50 so it would have been yeah. like 75 you know i'm max defense no i'm not max defense on this set but i would have definitely been able to eat it you know what i'm saying um yeah. just to catch up on the battle he switches in quillfish gets off the intimidate i lock it in with my fire spin you know i want to say this is a great g max ability to be able to keep pokemon in you know they can't switch out and um i bring back in como o expecting him to go for the paint split but he goes for the toxic which um you know it's to my benefit um so i don't know if you noticed but for the whole battle como o was faster than quillfish oh yeah. but this turn <laughs> and we <laughs> So after I look at the base speeds and it looks like they're both 80. So he won the speed tie, you know, a little shout out to, to your match where um, <laughs> the Lapras won the speed tie. Like on this on this turn, I lose the speed tie. And so my Como goes down instead of um, getting the Earthquake KO. Um, I believe I just bring in Sigalith to get the KO here because I believe um, if I get the KO here, it forces him to bring in Age Slash and goes go for another Shadow Sneak. Hmm. No Psychic on the uh, Sigilith, huh? Yeah, no. I, um, looking at his team, I believe Psychic was the only thing that hit Quillfish. I believe. I don't think he had anything else that really hurt from um, Psychic. But I had the Energy Ball for Quillfish and Lantern. I don't remember if he has a... Um, uh, ground type so yeah I, I just go for that and I was also supposed to have roost on my sigilith but he brings in crustle here um, I'm on when we talked he wanted to go for the shell smash and um, you know I just go for the air slash because you know it's my only stab move is gonna do the most damage I am also a life orb sigilith and I get a flinch so, <laughs> you know, I want to say it definitely you know, mattered. Um, I a little know. RNG can really help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm not sure how I would have played around the cell, the shell smash, but I want to say I, I definitely am glad I didn't have to deal with it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Oh. That would have been pretty tough to to deal with. Yeah, you know. So I now we we see a switch coming here. On on Aegislash, any thoughts on staying in and going for the heat wave? Well, I figured after seeing how much it did to my Scorch, who has sure. almost maximum HP, no special defense, but his special defense is around 85. I did not want to see what one of those hits could do to my Sigilith in which it would have been super effective. So I definitely like did not want to stay in. I, I never saw um Sigilith staying in on Aegislash. But I, I do wanna say, like I did forget um that Weezing would have neutralized the, the ability there. So Again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's two sure. times in a row where in which I could have brought in Weezing and definitely just nerfed his Aegislash. Um, to staying into its shield form in which it wouldn't have done much of any damage, you know? Yeah. Um, so here I'll just bring in Weezing to get the KO because I know he's locked into Shadow Sneak right now. He only has Aegislash and right Bombi left. So <clears throat> I'm sure I could take a take the hit, go for the flamethrower. And now, you know, I would I would love to hear your commentary on this play, which which I go for next. You know, um, like I said, he has right Bombi left. That's his only Mon. Now, going into this match, like I said about the Zap Cannon tech, I couldn't put Zap Cannon on Weezing because, um, you know, it was like a Gen 2 TM move. So I had Smog, which has a 70% accurate move attack. 
uh, 70% accuracy. So if I miss, I get the blunder policy off. If not, you know, I get a big hit. You know, he goes for the quiver dance. And, um, you know, I throw off a smog, I miss, but I get the blunder policy. <laughs> right? Yeah. And I was EV to outspeed it if without a quiver dance. So yeah. now I'm I'm staring a quiver dance right Bombi in the face. Yeah. And <laughs> let him back in a little bit. <laughs> I probably I probably would have just gone for the flamethrower myself. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. You know, the, the sludge bomb was even also <laughs> super effective, bomb. you know, get yep. that stab. And now right. it's like, yo, did I just lose? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, that is Yep. <laughs> to live, I mean, to, to win the battle, I figure I need Sigalith to live. Now, Sigalith hangs by a thread, but unfortunately, we get the special attack drop. Without the special attack drop, that would have definitely KO'd, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and at this point, I'm like, bruh. <laughs> I, I sacrificed my Weezing and my Sigalith. And I'm like, man, is this like what happened in the last battle? <laughs> where I make one misplay and I lose. So Oh my gosh. Luckily, I have my Gastrod on with the Rindo Berry. So if he has a grass move, which he does in this case, he has the energy ball. I am able to live the energy ball. If he crit me, man, I would have been upset. <laughs> so we get off the skull <laughs> and fortunately we can win, you know, like like the common theme is one misplay can be the battle you know i sacrificed two extra pokemon just to take out one um any any comments on the battle <laughs> that from your <laughs> um no i think he played i think he played really really well um i think sometimes we get lost in our own i like to call them shenanigans but you know it's our tech <laughs> Right. I like to call it shenanigans because sometimes it's just kind of some fun stuff you wouldn't normally see. And I think you really, really wanted Blender Policy Wheezing to go off. Yeah. <laughs> so much that you overlooked the fact that that was just the win. Right. Because um, getting the Sludge Bomb off um, at that point, I don't know, maybe that K KOs. Well, yeah, I was on max special attack. So um, I, think, I think I ran the calculation. But even if it didn't, you know, Sigalith had a um 18 percent chance to get o code which is like pretty low you know he might have gotten it but if i had gone for the sludge bomb and let's say it did a ko you know sigalith just comes in and, and ko's it or even gastrodon at that point but you know just to feed off of yo boy you said yeah definitely on some uh live by the shenanigans die by the shenanigans <laughs> so, yeah um, you know, I definitely, you know, I got lost in it too. I wanted to make a bright powder Hitmonchan work. That was kind of a dumb thing to do. <laughs> Yo, man, I, I was hoping, you know, it's, it's I like, think your, I think your smog play is cool. I, I really like that. The blunder policy and everything. And, um, I've been kind of relying on my shiny shuriken luck to do something similar. I've been trying to make a blunder policy like in rock work with stone edge <laughs> and yet I have yet to get it off because I've hit every stone edge, of course. Oh, wow. <laughs> well, I, I bet once you take that blunder policy off. You... Uh, it's misses. <laughs> misses for days. No, I think it was a good battle. Uh, good win, man. Congratulations on, on that one. And that one moves you to four and four? Well, five and three, actually. Five and three. Yeah, I've lost to you, Sen, and um, the Ice Cube. I don't even want to say <laughs> I lost to the ice cube. <laughs> yeah. So, and I moved to four and four after that one. Yeah, you know, just a little throwback to what I said a couple weeks ago. You know, we just can't manage to either both win or both lose in the same week, you know, except for the one week in which we couldn't get a streak started because we faced each other right after. So... <laughs> It kind of brought back the curse, but you know, hopefully we could pick up both wins in this next week's matchup. Which um, hopefully, yeah, let's hop right into that. All right, so here we are with my matchup. You know, New York Nickets versus the Dendemil Dragonites. Um, 
just to shout out two things one is that you know in my other league the bsl which i didn't make into playoffs this is the commissioner of that league and another thing is that shiny actually just went up against this for <laughs> this coach so you that know, team might look familiar yeah you know um the squad's trampa blastoise lapras musdale wrote them heat <laughs> and let me just call out something super random but will be in this video is that as of right now we just hit the mark on the shiny zero aura event we are at 1.4 million completed nice so you know um we are recording this on tuesday night so there will be a direct up um this morning if you guys are watching it on wednesday which that's when it premieres so you know i'm looking forward to seeing what comes out yeah that's cool so like now we're so back to your matchup <laughs> not to get too <laughs> sidetracked all right so you know gmax matchup we have firebug versus water ice um you know send the scorch doesn't look very good you know my fire move is going to hit it for neutral but that water that max geyser is going to hit me for um you know super effective outside from the gmax resonance you know maybe i could get off um a burn up and drop my fire type um i was thinking the same thing yeah you know and then i could maybe lock it in with the gmax inferno which um you know i, I love using um you know, and just to get rid of the Aurora Veil, I probably have more Pico with the Brick Break or even Verizion to set up my own. Because, like you said, um, his team is full of a lot of special attackers. You know, we, like you said, we have Blastoise, Trampa, um, Hatterene, Lapras, Minetric, Roserade, and Rotom Heat. Um, you know, and Solrock, which I don't think he brings, though. But, you know, that's most of the team that's special attackers, so I might want to bring a yeah. light screen on Verizion. You know, run my sets more on the especially defensive side as opposed to the physical side. So, I mean, other than that, um, I expect him to bring against my team. You know, I'm very fairy weak, so definitely that Hattering. Fairies have been giving me a problem. Um, Rotom Heat, Lapras. Let's say Trampa and Dusclops, maybe? and possibly Roserade or Mudsdale. Um, what do you think? Um, yeah, it like 75% of his team is special attackers, and I know that there's a couple of them in there that can be bounced back and forth. You know, Blastoise, you could technically run a physical set right. with the Shell Smash, of course, um, to make it a viable hitter. Uh, Dusclops, it's tough to say it's a physical attacker because it just does static damage with Nightshade and it usually has all support moves up to that. Mm -hmm. um, and then Maynectric can kind of swing over to a physical attacker, but really on the face value, 75% of this team is a special attacking team. So if you're prepped well and able to handle a specially defensive team, which your team can have some trouble with, um, it's not the bulkiest of Mons. You know, I think you run your Senna Scorch in a really great way. You've ran it very defensively. Your Gastrodon can do really well. You've got a great Mandibuzz that can go in and, and utilize that. But, you know, we've talked about it and we've made some, we've cracked some jokes. You know, Weezing, one of your go to Mons, <laughs> doesn't really enjoy special attacks. Definitely not. Definitely not, man. Weezing cannot take one of those for the life of him, man. We've seen what <laughs> Inteleon did to the Glorian form. We've seen what a sidekick did to it. We've seen what, um, in the match versus Sen, you know, this thing just is not specially defensive at all. Yeah. As far as what I see for them bringing, I, I definitely, I mean, Lapras is going to be a guarantee. That thing's right. coming because it's, it's probably the number one G-Max outside of the Galarian starters. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's too far of a stretch because of its abilities to just be a big wall with still decent attacks. Um, but then that absolute busted ability to set up Auroraville. Um, give it a light clay, which he did this last week, and you get eight turns of Auroraville, which is a special and physical you know, screen for you. Uh, and it lets your team kind of get set up and go. Yeah. Um, Support. I don't. I'm not too familiar with his play style. I mean, we were both playing after midnight, and so it's you know it was a super late match, and we were out of it. Um, you know, I don't know how the. I don't really know if the play style was that great. I mean, I was able to get a lot of things pretty low with a unprepped team, mm -hmm. 
And so I think if you're if you're prepped well enough, this is definitely a beatable team. Um, you know, I think more Pico looks pretty looks good here. Good. Yeah, yeah. From Dustclops to Gorgice to Blastoise to Hatterene um, to Lapras, you know, uh, Mudsdale could cause it a problem. So if you get rid of that, it's probably going to be good. But you know, a uh, Aura Wheel, a Dark Aura Wheel hitting Rotom Heat is going to be pretty decent. Um, Soul Rock on Pheasant. I mean, more Pico looks great, and pairing it up with something like Taga tomorrow just to give it a back, like a backup option, so that you know that um, Coach Darkspark has to constantly be thinking that one through. It's like, all right, there's still Taga D. You know, all right, what do I got to do here? Right. It could be, it could be cause him some problems on switches and things. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward to it, um, especially with the more Pico. You know, we already seen what that thing did against um <laughs> ice cube <laughs> yeah uh, you know taking out two pokemon in the first two turns you know if you don't have something to stop it which in his case would be a mudsdale you know on the electric type turn turn you know it could um you know start setting up you know that metronome isn't anything to play with yeah i think i think you'll see a very similar team to what he brought against me right uh there could be some variation in maybe I think uh, possibly Drampa. Mm -hmm. He might leave Drampa in the bag, uh, but then again, he might also. I, I think Hatterene does come. Possibly mm -hmm. Rotom Heat maybe sits this match out. Okay, yeah, because it's kind um, of like totally walled by Gashardon, unless he's like yeah in that toxic. It doesn't really look too appeasing it could help him out with mandibuzz and sigilyph oh, no, um and he scarfed it in my matchup so right so. all right yeah it'll be it'll be a toss-up you're definitely going to see blastoise you're going to see dust clops you're going to see hatterene you're going to see lapras and i i would say you personally you're going to see mudsdale and that okay. sixth spot is going to be a toss between drampa rotom heat okay so, yeah, you don't think that he'd use maybe... Well, I don't think Manetric does very well, you know. I'll be surprised on how he uses it. And also, Unpheasant or Soul Rock. You know, um, I'm pretty sure... Soul Rock that... hasn't come to a single matchup. I'd yeah. be surprised to see it. Versus, uh, right. He could surprise you, bring it, run some Stealth Rocks, maybe some setup, make it really bulky, slap an Assault Vest on it or something. Yeah, like a, like a Cosmic Power, Stored Power set moonlight might be scary possibly yeah yeah um but then he can't run assault vest oh right 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 and then i don't think he has anything to hit you know my two dark types marpico no my three hathiva marpico and mandibuzz well he's got hatterene yeah no i mean um on the soul rock unless it gets dazzling green. oh sorry you know and he could definitely go um he could go hard trick room this this yeah. week he could go Lapras, Hatterene, Dusclops, Drampa, Mudsdale, and I don't know, maybe even Solrock, maybe Gorgeist. Yeah, because um, he we, could leave Blastoise in the bag. We did see him, you know, set up the little trick room at the end. You know, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he, for one of his games he decides to go full trick room, you know? Yeah, he has the option. Yeah. It's definitely a beatable team. Um, any thoughts on slushing and rushing with bear tick <laughs> not in this case i mean if we're slushing and rushing in the rain maybe you know i could see that with um you know it does have access to a fighting type attack for lapras you know um the aqua jet well liquidation in the rain or even icicle crash against uh roserade you know um bear tick does look very good you know now that you say something i might think about bringing it but what's he, your I mean what's your thoughts on handling Mudsdale? Probably Siglith. Or or special version. Yeah. I didn't get to use Energy. it. Energy. Ooh, yeah. I didn't get to I use like it, it much last match because I wanna say um I didn't run through it last match, but in the match against um Coach uh Squid, you know, it was it was really good at the end, but as the battle progressed I should have definitely used it as a sec because in the end game i didn't have any use for it you know I, as the battle progressed i had um less and less uses for my verizian but definitely i could but in this match i could definitely see it being used um especially 
So yeah, yeah. I, mean, um, I like that special Brizzy idea. That's kind of fun. Yeah, I mean, other than that, um, you know, that thing with the stamina and the all that defense it gets, it's definitely nothing to play with. You know, it's it's a great wall. It is. Um, so yeah, I, I guess that's it for my uh, match against the Denimil Dragon Knights. We're actually battling on Wednesday, so you guys should look Tomorrow. for Yeah, you guys should look nice. for upload maybe Thursday or Friday. I should Friday. probably message my upload. <laughs> so let's hop into Shiny's uh, match recap. Yeah, so for my week nine outlook, um, I am heading up against the Nashville Nitto Kings. I don't know who the coach is apologize i don't know the coach team combinations very well you guys but um it's a it's gonna be a tough week it's gonna definitely be a tough week um you know i've got a very strong pokemon in corviknight yes that says g max and i know we all like to make fun of the g max corviknight but it it's still a corviknight and corviknights are extremely tough to break um i've used the corviknight quite a bit and really showcased how well it can uh, recover off and stay viable and continuing to set up even through hits so it's going to be definitely tough um you know galvantula of course immediately looks very very good for that gudra as well um and uh even inteleon with with some crit snipe shots if i had sniper and gmax you know i wouldn't even care oh, about Corbinate, yeah. but that's not a thing <laughs> um and then of course salazzle as well is looking pretty good for that big one from a G-Max matchup, the only way I look good is if I can hit a G-Max snooze first turn. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you know, that's the only way I'm looking good. Um, it would be kind of fun to have a method of trapping if I could guarantee myself a G-Max snooze. But I'm going to be completely honest here. Ever since Bishmi told me that G-Max snooze is not 100%, <laughs> I have not hit a single G-Max snooze. <laughs> I'm sorry for, you know, putting that in your head. You know, you're going in thinking, oh, I'm going to get the snooze every time. And then, you know, it doesn't happen on Tugger tomorrow. And you start to question things. And, like, literally, like you said, after that, it hasn't <laughs> happened again. <laughs> I literally haven't gotten a single snooze. I haven't gotten a single yawn effect <laughs> since I learned that it's not a when I thought it was 100%, I hit it every single time except for that talk tomorrow. I would have walked away from the match thinking there was a game glitch because he tried to click electric terrain. <laughs> but hopefully we can get something. You know, I've only, I haven't gotten a single flinch with Cloyster either. It's just, it's, yeah. Well, we'll just keep on rocking that shiny luck. Um, outside of that, it, this, opponent has a lot of great pokemon immediately your eyes get drawn to of course dragapult one of the premier uh pseudo meta or pseudo legends of uh of gen 8's meta um he's got ditto he's got heliolisk a fantastic special attacker mammal swine which can do so much with choice scarfs choice bands ice shards mm -hmm. um just a very strong attacking mon obstagoon with the guts i mean this is a really fantastically stacked team um, that I also have to say I appreciate because they don't. They also do not have legends or mythicals. Um, but yeah, I mean it's going to be extremely tough to play this team. I mean all the way down. The only kind of weaknesses I see are Maractus and Sock, which yep. are probably easier to deal with, but can do things in their own regard. Sock can be troublesome. Um, Maractus with Sucker Punch and other you know other ways to set up on itself. Um, can be kind of hard, but yeah, it's going to be a tough team. I think the six that I can envision them bringing are the G-Max Corviknight. I think Dragapult comes. Um, I I think Mamoswine comes because of its speed, bulk, and physical attack. Yep. And its ability to hit things like Vileplume, Salazzle. Uh, it can hit Ninjask. It can hit Mimikyu. It can hit a lot of things very, very tough. So it's going to be a really good mon for them. I so I think Mammoth Swine comes, and I'll probably see Obstagoon. Fukumuku might come, and then Shuckle for the sixth is, is the sixth that I'm probably going to be prepping most for with some alternates with Heliolisk and Ditto. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I see, you know, definitely in the G-Max matchup. Well, just one thing, just a shout-out for their team. It's like, 
you know, Corfer Knight's G Max move, G Max Win Rage, it <clears throat> eliminates like all hazards on the field. So if you bring in your Grim Snarl, set up the screens, you know, um, that'll be out the way. If you have Galvantula for the webs, that'll be out the way. But that's against you now for their own team. You know, you have Pukumuku, um, I'm pretty sure that thing like setting up, or even Shuckle, you know, it has Stealth Rocks, webs, um, and spikes, and then also with the Vicavolt, which actually runs a lot of sticky web in sets. You know, I'm surprised he has that uh, G Max Corviknight to kind of kind of play against his own team. You know what I'm saying? Um, but for the matchup, you know, I definitely think taunting the Corviknight will be big. You know, we see that thing setting up a lot with uh, bulk ups, iron defenses. You know, I've seen people run agility on it actually. Um, and you know that thing gets power trip which it takes all of it's like a physical dark type stored power you know yeah um, you know that thing could actually get out of hand but you know it looks like your team could handle it like you said with salazzle you know um salazzle is a great way to deal with it um you know but i definitely do see it coming along with dragapult you know those two i i will see him using against your team you know, um, like you said, maybe the Noivern and Ditto, you know, for the four. And then, um, like you said, Mammal Swine, like you said, for the um, yeah. attack and bulk. Um, I actually I see think, him bringing Obstacle too. You know, Obstacle with the knockoff. I, yeah. I think Mimikyu is going to be kind of clutch in this matchup. Right. It's going to be very important. Uh, you know, Mimikyu on Ditto. Uh, the good thing about Ditto is that it doesn't get a disguise, so I can just straight kill the Mimikyu right. faker, fake Mimikyu, <laughs> the fake, fake Mimikyu. Mimikyu. <laughs> wow. um, Dragapult doesn't handle Mimikyu very well. Um, you know, uh, a one sword stance shadow sneak does Oko Dragapult from full. Jesus. Um, so Dragapult's pretty easily handled by Mimikyu. Um, Heliolisk obviously is a great Pokemon and can do some stuff to Mimikyu before I can hit it, but now it's this gen and Mimikyu has Drain Punch to punch Heliolisk in the face. And just So Mimikyu for me looks really, really great in this match. Going even further down, you've got Mamoswine, you've got, you know, Drain Punch on Mamoswine, you've got Play Rough on Noiburn, you've got Play Rough or Drain Punch on Obstagoon. Drain Punch especially because it's four times four, effective. Yeah. Um, Pukamuku could be pretty tough for Mimikyu to deal with. Um, Shuckle, I could I could drain punch. So Sock, I can play rough. So Mimikyu looks fantastic in this matchup, as Mimikyu has looked great in every single matchup because Mimikyu is a great Pokemon. Yeah, and you know, just to shout out to what we said before, this thing is the number one pick, and we could see it in this match how well it goes against the entire team. You know, especially with the disguise ability, you could I you could. 100% get up a Swords Dance unless you're going up against an Excadrill or something with Mold Breaker. You know, you get up that Swords Dance and Mimikyu is looking terrifying. You know, as you said, you know, you're either play roughing, drain punching, or shadow sneaking in this match, you know. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'll it'll be a tough match to prep for because um, there's just, there's a lot of options. And a real quick note is, you know, he does have a mold breaker. Sock does get hidden ability mold breaker. Mm -hmm. So he does still have that option to ignore my Mimikyu, but he also can't hit me super effectively. Uh, right. So, you know, there's that. I will have to watch out because Sock does also get sturdy, so I can't Oko him. He can revenge kit hit me. Um, if my disguise isn't broken, he might be able to come back and hit me with, uh, I don't know, a dark move or something. I believe he gets a knockoff. Yeah. So it's gonna it's gonna definitely be a, a tough matchup. Um, we'll see. You know, Quagsire could maybe Unaware. maybe do some maybe do some damage here, uh, possibly with uh, I don't know Pukamuku if Pukamuku tries to start cursing. Yeah. Um, you know, you could he could run the soak block toxic. Oh my god. Recover. Oh my god, I hate that set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Silk Block Toxic Recover is exactly that. It's a toxic set, um, but it's it's viable. It's out there. Yeah. Um, so just um, pick on Dragapult. I'm pretty sure Grimmsnarl comes in for free against that thing all the time, unless 
he has the physical Dragapult in which it would get uh, Still Wing to kind of hit the Grimmsnarl. Um, you know, I know you did say you like running the physical Dragapult over the special, but um, it seems like special is the more popular way to run it. Which does baffle me because I think it's like something like a 30 base defense or base difference. Yeah. Yeah, I believe it's like 110 and 80, maybe. Or I'm so, I'm 90. just so shocked. I'm just so shocked that so many people run. Um, so it's a special it's attackers. It's 100 and 120. So yeah, that's a that's a pretty big difference. 20 base points is a lot. Yeah. But yeah, you know, um, do you have anything else to say about this team? No, I think it's going to be a, a good matchup, and I hope I can. Um, not only bounce back, I obviously want to bounce back and pick up a W, but honestly, from a creator standpoint, I just want to put out better content. That wasn't a good matchup for me. And so I want to get prepped for this one for real mm -hmm. and try to put out my best um, because that absolutely wasn't it right. in week eight. <laughs> so, Well, other than that, let's wrap it up here. Um, you know, it's been great going over these matches with you, Shiny. You know, I love doing these recap for the srl you know i'm looking forward to the other draft leagues coming up you know the isle of armor dlc did just release you know we got a lot of great content coming up with the pwd you know um and also the srl week three so i hope you guys are following these videos you know the evens are on my channel the odds are on shiny channel you know you guys could check them out down in the description um you know and i thank you guys for watching these videos you know it is on the long side like we always say but you know it is a lot that goes into draft battles you know aside from getting the actual battle done you know the prep work looking at the teams running your different sets um definitely modifying your pokemon at the end you know so um yeah i appreciate you guys watching it absolutely thanks for having me as always and uh you guys don't forget if you're new to bishmi's channel make sure you guys drop that sub Bishmi's been uh, pushing out content like no other, coming off of his first week of streaming after the 100-hour uh, marathon that we put on. So show that love on just on that sub button, and also remember to smash that like button. We absolutely love doing these um, analysis videos. It's a nice perk for us to get together and chat about some competitive Pokemon from a draft perspective. Yep, I couldn't even agree more. So thank you guys for coming out and make sure you hit your like button on the way out. Peace.